Do you have a new drawing tablet? Maybe you've had one for a while and you're looking for some cool accessories that will make your life easier. Well, today we've got you covered. Hello, my name is Brad. I review tech for creative professionals and drawing tablet technology has come a long way over the last few years that I've been reviewing this stuff. But still, with all that progress, occasionally, a well-placed accessory here too can really improve your productivity. And so that's what I'm talking about today. Some really killer accessories that you can get to complement your drawing tablet. Before I jump in, I do want to thank today's sponsor, Best Buy. Now throughout this video, you're going to see me using this. This is a pen display and it is called the Wacom One by, you guessed it, Wacom. Wacom is one of the most recognizable names in drawing technology, and the Wacom One is Wacom's budget price pen display. This drawing tablet is designed with artists, illustrators, note takers, and photographers in mind. It's got a 13.3 inch display. It's got a full HD screen, that's 1920 pixels by 1080 pixels. It's got an NTSC 72% color range, but the star of the show? is the pen. It's not only comfortable to hold in your hand, but it's completely battery free, which means, yeah, you never need to charge this thing. And on top of that, it has 4,096 levels of pressure sensitivity. If you've watched any of my videos, Wacom's Pen Tech is what I use as my gold standard that I grade other pens against. The lines, they're crazy smooth. You don't have to use any software to smooth those things out. Pressure sensitivity is responsive and consistent. Fast lines, they've got you. Slow lines, they've got you. Whatever you call these lines, they've got you. The screen itself has a matte surface and that gives the pen exceptional grip. So you're not gonna be sliding all over the place when you're trying to draw. It just gives you more control. And if you're brand new to this and you're not sure what software you should try first, there's some free apps included in the package. The Wacom One is also compatible with Android phones, Android tablets, and Chromebooks, making this even more accessible. And it makes a great gift for that artist in your life. Empower those that you love to unleash their creativity and break the mold. Check out my link down below in the description to check out the Wacom One at Best Buy today. So let's take a look at accessory number one, a tablet stand. Some tablets already come with stands in the box or attached to the back. For example, the Wacom One has these fold out feet that set up at a comfortable drawing angle, but everyone has different tastes when it comes to what position they like to draw from. What if you want it lower? What if you want it to be steeper? What if you want to use it as a second display when you're not drawing on it? There are a ton of drawing stands out there and most of them are going to cover most of these bases for you. But the one I've chosen here, I picked out for a couple reasons. First of all, this thing has a lot of angles so you can get it really low or you can prop it up really high if you do want to use it as a second monitor when you're not drawing. It's also pretty inexpensive. It's about $20 US and it's solid, which means this thing isn't going to slide down while you're resting your hand on it. It's going to stay in place. And it has a lip. That little plastic thing on the end, it basically helps keep your tablet in place even when it's set up at steeper angles. Many of the stands that you'll find out there are really designed for laptops in mind, not drawing tablets. So having something that can catch the bottom of your drawing tablet so it's not sliding all over the place or in danger of sliding off your stand is kind of important. Accessory number two, a shortcut remote. Now I'm pretty dependent on keyboard shortcuts as part of my workflow. I'm moving around the canvas, I'm flipping between my brushes and my erasers, pulling up my color picker. And when you have a drawing tablet on your desk, sometimes it can be also hard to fit a full-size keyboard right next to it. Or maybe you have a pen in one hand, so it's hard to reach some of those keyboard shortcuts just using one hand. That's where one of these handy shortcut remotes becomes really useful. This is another category where you have a lot of options. If you wanna go big, Wacom makes one of their own, and it's really nice. All the keys on this are totally programmable, but it has this touch wheel at the top that's great for changing brush sizes or zooming in and out. It comes packed in with some of the higher end Cintiq Pros. On its own, it sells for about $100. It's also got a rubbery grip along the bottom, so if you do set your tablet up at a steeper angle, it's not just going to slide off your table and fall to the floor. And if that's a little pricey, you might already have something in your house that you can turn into a shortcut remote. I made a whole video a few years back about how I turned one of my Switch Joy-Cons into a handy shortcut tool by pairing it to my computer and mapping all of the buttons using some extra software. And of course, if you want to go all out with those shiny glowing buttons, there are tools out there like the Elgato Stream Deck, which is designed for streaming, but it's also so customizable that it's got practical uses well beyond that. You could set it up to be program dependent. So in Clip Studio, you can have one set of shortcuts and maybe in your web browser, you have a completely other set of shortcuts. And of course you can do this 
with the Wacom remote and many other tools as well. But what makes this special is that each one of those buttons is like a miniature screen. And so you don't have to relearn all your shortcuts every time you're switching programs. They're just visually right there for you to look at. Number three, we have pen nibs. And these are the plastic tips of your stylus. And these can wear down over time, depending on how hard you're drawing on your tablet. Now many tablets, come with nibs already in the box because they know they're gonna wear down over time. But you can also get special custom nibs that are gonna give you a little bit of a different drawing feel. For Wacom's Pro Pen line, you can get these felt tip nibs that feel more like, well, felt tip markers, and they give you more drag on your screen tablet when you're drawing. Even Microsoft has a nib set for their Surface Pro pens that try to emulate some different pencil hardnesses, going from kind of a more rubbery feel all the way up to like a really hard plastic feel. One thing that you should look out for when you're looking at extra nibs to try out is that not all nibs are going to fit every single pen, so make sure that you get that something that's made specifically for your stylus. Number four, drawing gloves. Okay, I know this is usually the place where I do the glove dance, but this is a serious video and I am a serious person. I am a serious person. Oh, okay, fine, let's do it. Now, a lot of tablets just pack these gloves in as a bonus. I think they look kind of cool because they're cut out in a way that only like one or two of your fingers are actually covered by the glove. But really what they're designed to do is to prevent your hand from sticking to the tablet. When you're drawing and you want to get nice smooth lines, your hand has to easily and freely flow across the screen. And so that's what these gloves are designed to do is just reduce that friction. They're simple, they're cheap, and I personally think they look cool. Number five, replacement pens. Now, every drawing tablet that you're going to get comes with a pen, but what if you don't like that pen? Maybe it's too wide, or maybe it's too slim, or maybe it doesn't weigh enough, or it's just weighted in a weird way. For some devices, you can grab a completely different pen. For example, the Wacom One that I'm using here, it works with a lot of different pens. Since this is the same tech that Wacom licenses to Samsung for their Android tablets and their S pens, any Samsung stylus is going to work just fine here. I also like the Stadler pencil stylus. It's shaped like one of their iconic pencils, but it's a stylus. It it works exactly the same as the pack and stylus, it just feels different in your hand. Now as far as the line it produces, these styluses look identical when you're actually drawing. It's really just the feel in your hand that's different. Number six, a color calibrator. Now if you are a hardcore color nerd, then having a color calibrator is a must, and you may already know about these. My work isn't that dependent on having like super accurate color, and many of the pen displays that are coming out now are so much better calibrated than they were just a generation or two ago. But if you're working on something like a book or something that has to go to print, those kind of illustrations, or you're a photographer who can't even afford to be a little bit off, these are really handy. What you do is you connect this to your computer, then you place it directly on the screen. It's got a little camera that can check what the light and color of your screen is. And then you run the color calibration software that it comes with. It ends up giving you a new color profile that can be far more accurate than what you had before. The one that I'm using here is called the Spider X Pro. It's made by a company called Data Color. Data Color is one of like the big companies in this space. In fact, they're the only one I'm familiar with. So for a lot of pros looking for super color accuracy, they're the way to go. So those are the accessories that I find the most useful. But what did I miss? Is there something that you cannot live without? Let me know down below in the comments. Thank you all for watching and I'll talk to you in a couple of days.